Hello and welcome to another How To Code Well web chat. My name is Peter Fisher. Today we're going to talk about solving problems. Perhaps you're a front-end developer, perhaps you're a back-end developer, perhaps you're a DBA and you're just struggling on an issue. If you're a junior, if you've just started in this industry and you don't know how to solve a problem, if you, do, if you don't know what the problem is, um, you don't know who to talk to, you don't know how to investigate the issue. These are the things we're going to talk about today, how to find out information about the problem, where to look to solve them and who to ask. Okay, so imagine it's your first week on the job and you hit a problem and you don't know what to do, who to turn to, where to look. Well, if that is how you're feeling, then this video is for you. The first thing to do is obviously not to panic. If you don't take anything else away from this video, at least take this away. Lots and lots of developers before you would have probably already hit this problem. Now, if you're a back-end developer, if you're a PHP developer, a Python developer, a C developer, any kind of developer like that, even a DBA, a database administrator, a, a database developer, then there are various places that you can look to. And one of those places is a log file. So most of the time, data is being sent to a log file. If it's an error, then it would be in an error log file. So for example, if you've got a LAMP stack, a WAMP stack, a MAMP stack, any kind of stack that you're using um, for a database and the, the server and so forth, then those would have different types of logging. So for example, if you're using Apache, then that would be in the Apache error log. Um, so do check that out and there's ways that you can do what's called tailing which is tailing the log to get the last entry and you can follow that you can follow that log um, perhaps I'll do a, a tutorial on that down the road where you can actually see in real time new things coming into that log and you can find out things like line numbers and files and just exception messages so it's important to actually tell the application that you're running, the server that you're running uh, locally, that you want to see these errors, okay? Because sometimes the error handling isn't set to the right level, and so you don't actually see these issues. If you're a front-end developer though, you won't have the server logging like you would if you're a back-end. So there you would be relying on things like your browser traces. So you could look through, and perhaps it's a, a missing JavaScript file, maybe it's a, a missing CSS file, and so forth. So perhaps you might look through the resources um, in the web toolbars and stuff like that. Also you can output logging yourself. So you can do things like console logging and console debugging if it's a JavaScript issue. If you do have one of these LAMP, WAMP, MAMP kind of stacks, then you can also have a look at the access log. And this log file is great because it actually logs out each request going to the server as well as its response. And that response has a response code. So it's a 401 if it's on unauthorized, a 500 if it's an internal server error, and you know, and, and 200 if it's okay. And other things and other, other codes mean different things too. So if it's a 500, then you know that there's something, something has gone kaput in the actual server itself, in the PHP code, in the Python code. And so you can have a look at the error log because the error log should, if you've configured it correctly, to log, to spit that information out. Now, if it's a 404, then the request has hit something that doesn't exist and it can't find the resource. And really the advice here is to look for tip bits of information that will push you down certain avenues of investigation. So for example, if it's a 404 error, then the resource can't be found. It's an issue possibly with the front end because the front end is trying to request something that doesn't exist. Maybe it should exist and therefore it would be a, a back-end issue. Maybe it doesn't exist and maybe it's a front-end issue. Maybe you're requesting something that simply isn't there. Maybe the request is spelt incorrectly. Whereas if the server code is a 500, then that means that there is something wrong in the server itself. So in the, the way that the PHP has handled that request. So 
take a look at the PHP code. And also when you have a look at the access log, you can see the actual request path. So from there, you should be able to discover the controller that was called and then have a look at that area of code. And if the server code is a 500, then you'll be able to have a look at the error log as mentioned and have a look at the line numbers and the file paths and so forth. So the whole point, like I mentioned, is that you can find these tidbits of information that allow you to find and solve the problems quicker. If, for example, the page is giving you just a white screen, then don't just freak out and go, oh, I don't know what's going on. Have a look at the logs. When a developer tells me something is wrong, then one of the first things I ask is, have you seen the log files? Can you pinpoint the problem? The second piece of advice I would give is to actually put a time frame on yourself when actually trying to solve the problem. So if you can't solve it within two hours, the chances are you probably won't solve it in four hours. And that is because you've just focusing, focusing on a problem. Perhaps you need to step away and actually have a look at the bigger, bigger picture. So if you can't solve it within two hours, go for a walk, do something else, do another piece of development that isn't necessarily related to what you're working on and then maybe come back to it later and hopefully you'll be able to spot it. Maybe it's something that you have overlooked. The third piece of advice is to separate syntax errors from behavioral errors. So if it's a syntax error, you should be able to pick that up. You should be able to see that in the IDE that you're using. If the IDE has been configured correctly to actually find a syntax error, sometimes they underline it with red and also the syntax error should be pulled through on the log files too. Now, if it's a behavioral error, if some data that is correct is interfering with another piece of data and it's just doing this, then there's a problem with the way the system has been designed. So that probably requires a bit of thought to find the root cause and you need to do some investigation on how many times that happens, the frequency, maybe it only happens on a Monday morning, um, or maybe it only happens at two o'clock on a Friday afternoon. You know, then there should be some sort of triggers that identify what causes the problem. And then from there, you can start to isolate the problem. You can start to remove certain parts that interfere with that problem. It becomes a bit of a trial and error thing, but the more you remove out of the equation, the smaller it becomes, the more isolated the problem is, the more you can pinpoint that issue out and find a solution. When solving problems and bugs, a good tip is to actually write this stuff down physically. So whether that's on a whiteboard or a notepad, break the steps down, break them down into logical visual bite-sized pieces um, because perhaps the flow of the logic is incorrect. One thing to remember is that a computer will only do what you tell it to do. So if there is an issue in the behavior, then it's a logical problem. Logical problems can be solved. It's a case of finding the factors that influence the problem and working out ways to resolve it without causing other issues down the road. Maybe for instance, the code was written in one way and the application is being used in another way. Maybe the database has several constraints that lock down how this data is structured, perhaps in an integral way. And the, the, the behavior of the system is trying to break that. The thing that I say all the time is that there is no stupid questions, there is only stupid answers. And in this industry, there are so many questions, there are so many problems and bugs that we face that the bug that you're facing today is probably a bug that someone else or lots of people have seen before. And so there are resources that you can use. Stack Overflow, for example, you could even speak to someone, another developer to have a look at the, the, the code. It's always good to have another fresh pair of eyes. Now, don't be ashamed that you can't solve the problem. Perhaps there is another developer on your team that is more aware and experienced with a certain part of the system. And so maybe they could give you a little bit more advice, maybe another avenue stream of investigation. Perhaps they would say something like, maybe you don't want to be looking at this, maybe you should be looking at that. Or I remember hitting that bug 
um, and it was because of blah blah blah. The other piece of advice that I would give is use the experience of the team. Because if you're having the problem and someone else on the team has already solved that problem and you're sitting there thinking, oh, I don't know how to solve it, then you're wasting your time if, you've, if someone else on your team can solve it for you. And I know that there is a confidence issue there, but you just have to suck it up. You just have to go with it. And believe you me, when you find out how to solve the problem that's been plaguing you for perhaps hours and hours, then you will imprint that in your in your memory. So when you hit that issue again, you will know how to solve it. And you will then become the teacher. When someone else on your team hits that problem, you can solve it. Why don't you document the solution? Why don't you have perhaps a wiki in your development team? So when there's a common issue, perhaps you can tell other developers, have you have had a look in here? And finally, the last piece of advice is to use debuggers, use tools that will help you find where the problem lies. So for example, if it's PHP, then use xdebug. There's tools in your IDE that can track and trace what uh, type of code is running and it can find out and spit out the variables and the values and so forth. So do take a look at debugging. Debugging is something that we have to do and you can't get away from it. Debugging is something that we just have to do. And there are tools like I've mentioned that can do that quite efficiently. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. But if you've got any comments or questions about this, then do put them in the comment section below.